As the conflict between Israel and Hamas intensifies, Israeli troops are launching ground offensives inside Gazi in their bid to destroy the terrorist group. The majority of Telegraph readers have joined the US and Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel's Prime Minister, in rejecting calls for a ceasefire. The Israeli leader, who is under mounting pressure at home and abroad, declared, this is a time for war. His remarks came after the UN General Assembly overwhelmingly passed a resolution last week calling for an immediate, durable and sustained humanitarian truce leading to a cessation of hostilities. The Telegraph has since conducted an exclusive poll asking whether there should be a ceasefire in Gaza. A total of 75% of over 15,000 readers who voted believe a ceasefire should not be enacted. Reader Arthur McLeod said, Arab nations can battle Israel many times and lose. But Israel only has to lose once and the whole country is annihilated. A ceasefire is out of the question. Ronnie Dixon added, People who have not experienced the barbarism they've encountered and who are not in the firing line should not adversely judge. Israel is a democratic sovereign nation. An anonymous reader said that a situation in which Israel lays down its arms and mustn't be allowed to defend itself would not make them safer and more secure. Others pointed to the dangers that other Western nations could face if Hamas is not eradicated. Kevin Thomas, who backs Mr. Netanyahu's stance, said that this is a fight between Western civilization and barbarism. Between good and evil. If Hamas beat Israel, which they won't, Christian Western civilization will be next. He concluded, a good ending for this current battle would be the defeat of Hamas and the evil Iranian theocracy. Carry on added, Israel is lucky to have Netanyahu. Nobody is perfect, and politics is a dirty business, but at least he has a backbone and is prepared to protect values we share. In reality, Israel is doing our dirty work, the terrorists would soon endanger our own lives. Those calling for a ceasefire are cowards, she added. Palestine needs to be free of Hamas to prosper. Likewise, Roger Ferry called for additional support for Israel because it is at the front line in our own defense against this despicable ideology. Hamas must be defeated. Alex Hawthorne pointed out that there was already a ceasefire, but it was broken in a most spectacular and inhumanly brutal way on October 7 by Hamas. Meanwhile, Anthony Bargain questioned, what would reverting to a ceasefire achieve? Apart from a repeat of the October 7 acts of terrorism against Israel, a number of readers also warned that those demanding a ceasefire are offering no alternative solutions. One anonymous reader said that those calling for a ceasefire need to explain what happens after. John Elba posed the question, how does one expect the world to deal with Hamas? Then, sit around the campfire and sing Kambaya. Michael Williams said, Do they really think that Hamas will relent and stop attacking Israel in an endless cycle of death and destruction? Do they not understand that Hamas will rearm and regroup in its Iran-backed efforts to destroy Israel and kill all its people? With an enemy that hides amongst the people and launches its weapons from sites close to hospitals. What are the Israelis supposed to do? Israel has only two options, destroy Hamas completely, with all the death and destruction that means, or accept that they and their country must die. Elaine Cowan added, a ceasefire implies both sides agree to the conditions. Would Hamas agree not to fire rockets? Very unlikely. Remember, they attack on the Jewish Sabbath. A Jewish holiday and at dawn, killing families in their homes and people partying. Most of their chosen attacks have been civilian targets. Would you honestly believe they would keep to any peace conditions if your family's lives 
dependent on them. Conversely, 25% of readers who voted back a ceasefire in Gaza. Reader James Pemberton argued, the rest of the world must be absolutely sick of our constant and perpetual warmongering. Referencing Paul Bristow, the conservative MP, who was sacked after breaking ranks with Rishi Sunak to call for a Gaza ceasefire, he added, when you can lose your job for wanting peace it shows how bad it has become. Will Tell said that while the October 7 attacks were atrocious, Israel is now totally overshadowing what is happening in Gaza, one of the biggest humanitarian crises of our time. Meanwhile, Colin Mason said that Israel's campaign in Gaza will further increase the massive death toll of innocent civilians. He added, but this collective punishment is somehow deemed better than a ceasefire? Some readers also believe that war and violence will never solve the conflict. Reader Margaret argued that even if the Israel Defense Forces bomb Gaza to dust, Israel will never have peace. Peace may last a while, but Benjamin Netanyahu's grossly out-of-proportion revenge has now caused a revenge that will make the massacre of October 7 seem like the slightest of attacks. She said. Terry Smith said that it is via diplomacy that some hostages have been released and it's highly likely that the remaining hostages will be released via diplomacy and not war. He added, hostages have already died via bombing. What is the goal here? If the goal is to extract the hostages alive, then stop bombing. If the hostages aren't a priority in killing as many Palestinians and Hamas terrorists is the goal, then keep bombing. William Edison said that what is happening in Gaza represents crimes against humanity. It is barbarism akin to that of Hamas. It will serve only to recruit thousands more young men and boys traumatized by the death and destruction they are witnessing in Gaza to serve as new recruits to terrorism. He said, It will enlist many terrorists from sympathizers outside of Israel, repelled by what is happening to the innocent Palestinians and disgusted by the one-sided support of the West for Israel to bring terror to Europe and the UK. We could not defeat the IRA by war. We had to make a fair settlement that has created a lasting peace. There will be no lasting peace in Israel without such a settlement.